Welcome back everyone. In this video I'm going to take a look at an enhancement to the self-balancing robot version 2 code. A couple of people contacted me and suggested it'd be great if you could tune the robot over Bluetooth. So I've looked at that and implemented it. So the settings are now saved in the EEPROM and you can tune uh, various parameters over Bluetooth using the iOS Bluetooth app I developed and the upgraded version of the app has been approved by Apple and I've released it in the App Store so I'll put a link below to where you can grab that from the Apple App Store okay so let's take a look at it now Okay, so let's have a look at uh, what we've done to the robot code. Included a new class called settings. I'll put a link to a, another video I did on saving values to the Arduino EE prom, and it covers off on actually developing this class. So I won't go through the actual code in great detail here. I'll just go through the changes from that tutorial video. So first things first, um, just setting a version number of for the settings, SBR 2.0, just so that when we load the settings in, we can check and make sure that it's actually valid data that we should take into account. And I've built out this structure to include all of the values that I actually want to save. And that's essentially just the, all of the tuning and uh, maximum speed controls and things like that. If we take a look at the class definition, there are two new methods, a send parameters on serial, which just allows us to dump out all of those parameters onto the serial port. And also there is one called process command string. So we can take a string that we've received on the serial port and decode that command and do what's required. So if we have a look at the new methods, so the send parameters on serial is pretty straightforward. We're just dumping out the actual parameters. So the name of the parameter, a colon, and then the actual value, one for each line. And if we have a look at the process command string, again, nothing overly complicated here. Just dumping the command that we received out on the serial port and then decoding what the actual command is and then appropriately grabbing the actual value and converting it to the correct type and saving it to the actual parameter and just returning an OK and uh, just sending out invalid if we don't find a valid match. So pretty straightforward there, nothing sort of over the top. Now if we take a look at the actual main code module, including that settings header, setting up the initial settings. So some default settings, which are exactly what they used to be, hard coded, and instantiating that settings class with those defaults. Now you'll note in the constructor that it actually checks to see whether there is valid data in the EEPROM. If there is, then it overwrites those defaults. If not, then it leaves those defaults as true. So we've always got values to be used in the robot. Okay, so where uh, some of these settings were hard coded, that's been removed in this particular module. So there were some bits and pieces in the setup which have been removed and where the PID was being um, set up, I've actually moved that all into a set PID parameters method. And if we take a quick look at that it's essentially just passing those settings through now and it's quite verbose so I've moved that off to a, a separate uh, method just to make it a little bit easier to actually read moving into the loop and taking a look at the state engine the first thing is the check serial comms has changed it's got somewhat simpler in that if there is a value at the serial port we're reading it in and setting the received counter to 25. Now in the initial code 
whatever direction command we receive, we apply it for a certain length of time after someone stops sending that signal and then we return it to no command at all. And in this case, it's 25. So we're just, when we receive a new byte, we're setting a receive counter to 25. Now, if we come back up and have a look at the actual uh, state machine, uh, when it's an MPU error, we're setting that receive counter back to zero and the receive byte also just clearing that if there was anything in there. So just finishing whatever commands may be. Uh, low battery, the same thing, just removing any commands that may have actually been sent. Same thing in MPU init. In starting, what we're doing is if it's a new byte, in other words, the receive counter has been set to 25, which it will do when we receive a new byte, we check to see if we've received a capital S. Now, if it is, we actually change it to settings mode. So there's two new states in the state engine, one called tune underscore starting and one called tune underscore balancing. So if we receive an S while it's starting, we put it into tune starting mode and send on the serial port that we've changed to settings mode. And we actually just dump out all of the settings that we have in the system at the moment. If we don't receive an S, then we basically just say we're not accepting commands because it's in starting mode and we clear the command. And the rest of it is as it was. In balancing, um, same deal. If it's a new character we've received, we check to see whether we've asked to go to settings mode with a capital S. If it is, then we change the state to tune uh, balancing. And again, we send out that we're in settings mode and we dump out all of the settings on the serial port and set the receive counter back to zero. If it's not an S, then we check to see if the receive byte is greater than 16 decimal. If it is, it's not actually a command that we've sent to it because all of the commands are basically less than decimal 16. So we just say it's an invalid command, reset the counter to the receive counter to zero so it won't do anything. And the very next command is if the receive counter is above zero, then reduce the counter, else set it to zero. So in effect, we're capturing those commands to change states. If it's not one of those, we check to see whether it's a valid command. If it is a valid command, then we actually execute that. If it's not, we just send back an error. So fairly straightforward. Now, the two new states, if you look at everything after the handling the commands, are exactly the same as starting and balancing state. So it was just easier to introduce the new states to handle the different commands that we're going to receive in the different states. So first up, if we're in uh, tune starting, then we just look to see whether it's a new byte again. If it is, then if we've received a capital R, we put it back into starting and send that we're in run mode. When we receive a capital W, we actually save all of the values to the EEPROM and just return saved OK. Then we check if we've received an actual command. So all our commands are less than decimal 13. And if we have received a command, then we just respond saying we're not responding to direction commands at this point in time. Else, if we have received 13, which just happens to be a carriage return, then we actually process the command string. After we've processed the command string, we reset the PID parameters and return that we've got new parameters and dump those parameters out on the serial port and then set the command to nothing. Now, if it wasn't a carriage return, we actually just build up the command string. So the command, we just concatenate the receive character and just build up a string until we receive that carriage return. And after we've done all that, we just clear out the character that we have received. Now in tune balancing, the first part of it's much the same. We check to see whether it's a new character. If it is a new character, if it's an R, we put it back into run mode. If it's a W, then we save and return OK. 
if it's less than 13, which means it's a command, we actually just say it's not responding to direction commands. We're in this mode, we're actually wanting to tune the PID loop. And the last thing we want to be doing is issuing commands to the PID loop to actually move here, move there, or anything like that. We actually want it nice and stable, and we want to start tuning it. We can introduce errors by moving the robot manually and things like that, but we don't really want to be driving it. So in this mode, we just say we're not responding to direction commands if someone tries to command it forward, back, or turn it. Else, we do the same thing as before. We just build up that character string until we've got a carriage return, and then we actually process the command and just dump those parameters out on the serial port. And the rest of it is pretty much the same, but it is only just doing balancing. It won't do any driving in that mode. So at the end of the day, that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else that's changed a great deal apart from where we had references to variables for max speed and things like that in the calculations. That's now been referenced back through the settings. Okay, well, that's pretty much it for the changes. If you've got any questions, then please uh, add them to the comments or you can contact me on Facebook or via email and I'll do my very best to help out. If you like what I'm doing, then please do like the video. If you'd like to see more, then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new. And I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.